Today I am going to go over living wills. Um, there was an article, it was actually in October, the end of October I found this article. And it really struck a chord with me because it talks about how you can make all the plans you want, but it may not go the way you planned it. Um, the article was in, I think it was, yeah, nextavenue.org, which I've talked about before on here, and written by Lola Butcher called When End of Life Plans Are Just Hopes. And, you know, I think we always kind of hope for the best, and that's what we plan for, but it doesn't always go that way. And, you know, I, I do have a living will. I have, you know, my advanced directives. I have all of that in place. But after reading this, it's like, wow, you know, that may still, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and this woman talks about how her mother had terminal cancer and, um, let's see, her mother said, I always thought I would just fall over dead while I was walking across the backyard. And the daughter, Lola, responded, not me. I'm planning on going out like Uncle Ernest. Go to bed healthy and wake up dead. <laughs> and so um, her mother had previously had uh, breast cancer, had a lumpectomy, everything was fine. Uh, but then she, the cancer came back. Um, so they knew that it was going to be serious this time. And... Um, she said her mother was always a really good planner and that while her plan was to die quickly, it wasn't really a plan, it was a hope. You know, we all hope to go quickly or quietly, you know, we all have this vision in our head of how we want to go, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen. And so um, her mother had done an advanced directive, um, which is also called a living will, um, you know, about what medical care you want if you are not able to speak. And I've also talked about this a little bit with my daughter. I need to talk to her about it more. Um, and she said her mother had a plan B. If she didn't get the sudden death she was counting on, she had that living will. So, um, she gave each of her kids a copy of it, and her doctor has a copy. So um, she said, if you keep me alive on machines, I'll come back and haunt you. I think I said the same thing to my daughter. <laughs> and um, let's see. Da, 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 da. There's a lot of just little stuff in here. So, um, so despite the living will um, and the fact that her four kids knew what her desires were, they still weren't prepared for, or they still weren't prepared to advocate for those preferences. And so they just said whenever the physician said something, they agreed to it. And, you know, if the physician said she needs this test, they said, okay. You know, and I, I think most of us are like that. If a physician says you need it, okay. Because we don't have medical background. We don't know what he's talking about. And because he's the professional, we, you know, we, we let him tell us what is needed. And, but if there's an advanced directive, then you have to look at that and say, well, she didn't want this. And um, you also have to look at that as far as high hospice and um, any, like if they're in a nursing home, you know, what kind of care are they getting there? Are they getting the, something past the advanced directive that they didn't want or um, I think I have to look at mine again and revisit it, but I think mine is like 
I don't want anything. You know, I, I'm like in the strictest sense of the advanced directive where, you know, if I can't talk, just let me go. Um, you know, don't give me anything. Don't, don't try and make it easier on me. Just go. And so, um, Um, so they ended up, it looks like they ended up putting her in uh, an inpatient hospice and it was further away from everyone, but um, because she was in hospice, they couldn't, the home care agency that serviced their area didn't service hospice patients. Um, so they had to take her to an inpatient hospice center, which was further from their house. And so it was harder for them to get there. And um, so I'm not sure, it doesn't say if they were there when she died or not, which, you know, I hope, as miserable as that sounds, I hope that they were there for her and for themselves. Um, so, but her ending, her ending paragraph is, before all this, I would have said that our, end of, our one end of life plan was that mom would not die in a nursing home that was just as miserable as we all had feared it would be. But what I really meant was that our that was our hope. We didn't have a plan. So it's not only the advanced directive that you have to take into consideration. You need to discuss everything with whoever is going to be handling that advanced directive. Make sure that they know. Make sure that they have a plan if that advanced directive has to come into play. Um, because otherwise they're going to be at their wits end. They're gonna say, well, I don't know what she wanted. I, I God, oh, what am I gonna do? And um, I know when my mother died, my mother had Alzheimer's and before she got too bad, she did sign a, an advanced directive. And we had also known, you know, from years earlier that she did not want to be left in a vegetative state. And it was printed on this bright fluorescent pink paper. Her doctor had a copy of it. We had a copy of it on the fridge, you know, with a magnet on the fridge. So it was right there. And uh, ironically enough, when she died, she died in the kitchen. And so when the EMTs came, they saw it right there and they said, okay, you know, we're not going to try and resuscitate and so they called, you know, the coroner and everything. Sorry. <laughs> it is a hard subject to talk about, but it is a needed subject to talk about. And so uh, that, you know, please, you know, even if, like with me, you know, my cancer is, you know, I've had the lumpectomy, I've gone through chemo and radiation, and I'm going through it. I don't expect to keel over anytime soon. I'm still going to discuss this with my daughter to make sure she understands exactly what I want. Even though we've discussed it in the past, you know, sort of more in passing because of what we went through with my mother, I'm going to make sure she knows for future, you know. And, and it's not just for this, I mean, you know, if I get hit by a bus trying to cross the street, I, I want to make sure she knows. So, that's something else to consider in your long term or short term. <laughs> I, you know, quite honestly, none of us know how long we have. Like I said, bus hit, you never know. So make sure you have all your ducks in a row, have everything taken care of, not only for you, 
but for everybody else in your life. Make sure they know where all your legal papers are, your wills, your bank statements. Make sure that somebody has access to all of these if they're in a safe or a, a um, safe deposit box or you know, if you have them hidden in some kind of secret place in your house, make sure somebody knows, you know, and um, I don't know, I know it's such a touchy subject. Anything dealing with death is a touchy, is a touchy subject, but it's also something that has to be dealt with because otherwise you may think you have everything taken care of because you have all the paperwork, but if you've hidden it so that nobody can find it, then it's not taken care of. Somebody has to know, and somebody has to know what you want in case of, you know, getting hit by that bus or what have you. And if nobody knows, then you're going to suffer. Your family is going to suffer because they don't know what you want, and they won't know what to do. But if they have clear-cut directions, then it's you know it's easier for them to say this is what she wanted so let's do this rather than waffling back and forth and saying oh I don't know what she wanted I don't know what to do and then that puts all the guilt on them so please just take care of that and I'll talk to you later